The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining our first time home buyers class. Today, for those who don't know me, my name is Stephanie Thomas, and I'm your local real estate agent here in South Florida. Today, I'm also joined here with the mortgage expert, Brian Sachs, who has been in the industry for over 39 years. So today we'll be sharing some great information about what programs are out there. We'll be addressing some common misconceptions and much, much more. So my hope for you guys is that at the end of this seminar, you feel confident and better prepared to when you start your home buying journey. So today's class, give or take, will take about 45 minutes long. I know that won't be enough time to get to absolutely everything. However, if you do have a question, please note them down. And at the end of the seminar, our contact information will be attached to the slide where you can go ahead and submit them. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So let's jump right into it. Um, we'll be going over 10 steps you can expect when using a buyer's agent. So the first step is establishing a home goal. So typically this is where we discuss what the definition of your dream house is. This is where you'll let me know the areas that you prefer to live in, the number of rooms, whether you prefer your home to have a pool, a car garage, you name it. So this is, like I said, where we just go back and forth and, and we figure out what your home goal is. The second step is getting pre-approved. So this is actually one of the most important steps because this will give you an idea on what you can realistically afford when purchasing a home. The next step is one of my favorite steps, which is viewing homes and selecting the one. This is what the step I like to call, that's the fun part. <laughs> this is when, when we schedule a list of properties to see and you pick the one, um, the one that you feel like checks all your boxes, the one that you can, at the end of the day, call home in. And then after that is making an offer. So that's where I put a contract together, which is a written agreement that includes the terms of the purchase, price, down payment, and the proposed closing date along with location. So for number five, kind of ties in with the number four, which is negotiating the best terms and price. This is where the seller either accepts the offer or we go back and forth negotiating the best terms and price to get to an agreement where you, the buyer, feel happy and the seller accepts. So step number six is making a loan application. So this is where Brian comes in and you guys work closely together to complete your financing, to make sure that the bank lends you the money that you need in order to purchase that home that you dream of. The next step is getting a home inspected. So with this, many properties are sold as is, but something I recommend all my clients is to get an inspection. Um, this is typically where someone who is a professional who is licensed comes in and gives you a report on the inside and outside of the property, um, giving you more details, more than what you can see from, from your point of view. So they kind of dissect it a little bit more. Um, and this just gives you more information to, to make sure that you feel confident and you feel at peace with your decision in buying the property because essentially buying a property is a huge investment. So just knowing that you know you made the right decision and being able to sleep peacefully at night knowing that, that you're good with the decision um, is super important. So that's why I always recommend all my clients to always get the home inspection. It's not something that's required, but again, it's something I highly, highly recommend. So step eight is appraisal. This is when the bank sends somebody to get the value of the home to make sure the home is actually worth what it says it is. And then step number nine, which is the final walkthrough. This is normally the day of closing, or it could also be the day before. So this is typically just to make sure the property is in the same condition that you agreed to 
or if you also <laughs> negotiated for certain repairs to be made to make sure those repairs have indeed been made. Um, and also you just wanna make sure nobody just goes running away with the door and leaves you doorless or a window or anything like that. So a walkthrough is to really ensure that the property is as you saw it when you initially made the offer. And then the final step, which is the most satisfying step. This is where you schedule your closing um, on this day, you can typically expect a lot of signing. You go over everything. Um, so like I said, you expect to do a lot of signing. You expect a lot of happiness and joy, and you finally get to have the keys to your home in your hands. So that's briefly um, the 10 steps of, of using a buyer's agent. So what you'll learn today, so we went over the first, which is the advantages of using buyer's agent and Brian will go a little bit more in detail with that as well. Um, you'll learn the three types of lenders and which one is best for you, how to get more take home pay to pay in your mortgage, types of financing in which is best for you, how to buy a home even if you don't have perfect credit, costly mistakes to avoid, when buying a home, the one document that increases your negotiating powder. And also you'll learn some stuff about title company, title insurance, the difference between owners and lenders policy. So with that being said, I'll have Brian take it away from here. Okay, so thank you so much and thank you all for being here. Uh, Stephanie, I'm honored to do this workshop with you. So here's the question, folks. Who's ready to own your own home? Who's ready to stop renting? You know, it, it's funny because I hear people say they're not ready to pay a mortgage, they're gonna rent. What you may not realize is when you're renting, you are paying a mortgage. <laughs> you're just not paying your mortgage. You're paying your landlord's mortgage and making them wealthy. -er. So I wanna share with you an interesting statistic. Um, I just saw this, and look at this. In 1971, the interest rate for a mortgage was 7.33. If you waited for rates to go down, you would not have purchased a home until 1993. So you would have rented for 22 years while real estate, that $100,000 house during that time, went up to $400,000. Folks, don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and then you wait. It's sort of backwards. This sounds a little corny, maybe even a little cheesy, but it's true. Marry the house and then date the interest rate. We can always refinance you, uh, but home prices will over time go up. And in South Florida, Stephanie, we, we've seen it, right? Homes in mm -hmm. just the last two years have, have gone up significantly. So here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about different kinds of lenders. We're going to talk about how to get more pay uh, from your paycheck so you can make your mortgage payments easier. We're going to talk about financing different types of loans. We're going to talk about how to buy a home even if you don't have perfect credit. I'll tell you an interesting statistic. 60% of Americans have a credit score of 660 or below, which is fair. It's not terrible. It's not wonderful. We'll talk a little bit more about credit. Then we're going to talk about uh, a document that increases your negotiating power. Now, I want to just caution you because here's what I find. I find over the last 35 years, 38 years in this industry, that when you announce that you're looking for a home, everyone is an expert. Your family, your coworkers, your friends, all of them from the bottom of their heart and from a great place are gonna give you advice. But the reality is that what was right for them may or may not be right for you. So you owe it to yourself to speak to a professional like Stephanie and myself. The one other thing I'm gonna tell you about buyer brokerage is this, 
I'll tell you a horror story so you can avoid it. Let's say you're out on a Sunday and you go into an open house and the person in that open house is the nicest, sweetest, most competent, wonderful person you've ever met in your life. And you feel like instantly at ease with this person. And the house is beautiful. It's $400,000. And you tell the agent, hey, I want this house. And, you know, we're, we're going to offer three ninety, dollars but we'll go up as high as four fifty. dollars We have to have this house. So that agent puts a contract together for you and presents it to the seller. Guess what they say to the seller? They say to the seller, do not, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, do not accept this contract because this buyer, although this contract is for $390, this seller, these buyers have told me, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, that they're willing to go to $450. Now, I want you to digest that for a minute. Why? Why would an agent do something like that? They were so nice and sweet and accommodating. It's because that agent is a listing agent and that agent works for the seller and they are legally obligated to get that price as high as possible with the best terms as possible. So I just want to drill down a little bit deeper here. What you want instead is a buyer broker. You want Stephanie as your buyer broker so that she is representing your interests and negotiating as hard as possible. And Stephanie is a very, very skilled negotiator. Her job is to get you that house for three ninety. dollars So you want to make sure that you're not visiting open houses or calling listing agents. You need a buyer's agent. And when you speak with Stephanie, she'll explain that to you a little bit better. Is that right, Stephanie? Yes, that's correct. You hit it on the nail right there. Okay, perfect. So let's talk about the top five reasons people rent. Um, well, you might be new to the area and just trying to get your bearings. Uh, when I moved to South Florida, I sure as heck didn't know where I was. And so uh, I rented for a couple of years just to really figure out where I wanted to be. Or maybe you think you don't have enough money for down payment and closing costs. We'll fix that. Maybe you've had past credit issues, maybe even a bankruptcy or a foreclosure. We can fix that too. Maybe you think it's too hard to qualify for a mortgage. The truth is nothing could be further from the truth. And maybe you think you can't afford a mortgage payment. Like I said earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, you're making a mortgage payment. It's just not yours. So better you should make a mortgage payment and you build, literally build, generational wealth. Uh, in so many families, I see breaking that cycle of renting and finally owning, and it creates wealth for generations to come. So who am I? Um, and, and this isn't coming from arrogance or, or ego. It's just, it's really important, as I said earlier, that you know who you're listening to. I've actually written the book on getting a mortgage when you've had credit issues, and it, it was a national bestseller and an Amazon bestseller. Uh, over the last 39 years, I've probably closed, uh, at this point, maybe even 5,500 families I've helped get into a home, and uh, well over $1 billion. Uh, I've also been on NBC, ABC, CBS. Again, I don't tell you that to brag only because I think it's very critical that you know who you're talking to or who you're listening to. So let's talk about programs. Again, there's no way Stephanie and I can cover everything here. And um, we're not really trying to. <laughs> we're, what we're trying to do is sort of give you some insider tips, some knowledge you may not find elsewhere. And more importantly, give you an overview. Everyone who is attending our workshop today may have a different situation. And so what Stephanie and I pride ourselves on 
is customizing and tailoring your personal situation. And we're not just going to tell you what you qualify for because there's a whole other important issue, right? And that's the issue of what you're comfortable with. So really what you want to do is get pre-approved first, know what price ranges you're comfortable with, know that you have a mortgage in place, the money's sitting here waiting for you to find a house, and that takes the stress away from the whole process. So we're going to talk about FHA. FHA is the Federal Housing Administration. The benefit to this program is low down payments as low as three and a half percent. You can get seller help or all the funds can be a gift. Uh, we'll talk about where to get funds. In this competitive market, um, you may not want to ask for seller help. There's other ways to get you some funds. Uh, and in Florida, the Hometown Heroes program is a phenomenal program when the funds are available. Uh, those funds come and go, but when it's available, uh, just a tremendous, tremendous benefit for home buyers. FHA makes it easier to qualify and allows you to qualify for more home. They're also very liberal when it comes to credit scores. You could have a credit score as low as 580 and potentially get an FHA loan. The downside, uh, appraisal standards are a little stricter. You have to work with a lender that is an FHA approved lender and they do have what's called a mortgage insurance and that's an insurance that protects the lender in case you don't pay. The next program is for veterans and thank God, you know, there's a great program for people who really uh, allow us to live in this country and be free and safe. So, um, the VA program, many people don't know this, but the VA program is not only for, um, for veterans, it's actually for uh, reservists as well. So it's no money down, very liberal qualifying ratios. Uh, pretty strict appraisal guidelines. We want to make sure that the home the, the veteran is buying is safe and structurally sound and in good condition. Again, if you are a reservist with six years of service in the reserves, uh, you also could be eligible for the VA program. The closing costs could be paid by a lender, by a seller, by a, with a gift from family members. Well, again, we'll talk about money in in an upcoming uh, slide, but you have to be a veteran or it could be a veteran and a spouse. Um, there is a funding fee similar to a mortgage insurance, but if you're a veteran there is no or a reservist, there really is no better product out there. And then you may hear Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and conventional. What is that? Well, these are conventional loans. The pros are you can put as little as 3 to 5% down. You have to have 5% of your own funds. There is something called mortgage insurance on a conventional loan, but the mortgage insurance goes away unlike VA and unlike FHA. With the conventional loan, the mortgage insurance can go away, and at some point you might find your payment actually dropping. The downside to conventional loans is that the appraisal guidelines are a little bit easier, so they may not be as thorough as, F as FHA or VA. They're much stricter with credit. You really need to have credit scores in the mid to upper sixes, uh, preferably even in the sevens. And oftentimes on a conventional loan, you will qualify for a little bit less house. So. Let's talk about myths, right? Uh, I can't purchase a home because I don't have a lot of money for down payment and closing costs. Well, how much do you need? Um, we just talked about all the different programs. Uh, I mean, there are ways to get you in with no money down. I know that sounds like a late night infomercial, but there are ways to get you in with no money down. 
but your down payment is only one part of this equation. You also have settlement costs. So let's talk about that. Closing costs are made up of really four big categories. Lender charges, that's for like an appraisal, credit report, underwriting fees. Um, then there are title company charges. So they're going to have title insurance that protects you against any claims someone can make down the road. There are title exams, settlement fees to conduct the closing, uh, a fee to record the mortgages. Then there are prepaid items. Those are items like escrows for taxes, homeowners insurance. And then there are state and local transfer taxes in addition. So it's not just your down payment, it's closing costs and down payment. And depending on whether you're buying in Palm Beach County or Broward County or Miami or Port St. Lucie, all, or Martin County, all these fees can be a little bit different. So Stephanie and I will be happy to walk you through all that. What do you do if you don't have enough money for down payment and settlement? So I'll tell you a couple really creative ways. Gifts from relatives. Relatives love to help when they can. Lender credit. Sometimes we as the lender can give you the money. Um, grants, I talked about the Hometown Heroes, the Florida programs. There are lots of other grants out there. Secured loans. So <clears throat> if you are working and have a 401k retirement account, oftentimes you can borrow from your retirement. I didn't say take a withdrawal. I said borrow. And you know who the best person you could possibly borrow from? Is you. When you borrow from a 401k, you're really borrowing your own money. So that's a great option. And then there are sometimes, again, this is very market dependent, um, but sometimes we can even structure a situation where a seller helps with a little bit of that closing costs. You know, I'll tell you, here is a great program that we have called Home Fund It we'll match up to $2,000. Um, and like if you're getting married or just graduating school or have some other event in your life or even no event in your life, you can, we'll put up a page for you, a web page. It acts just like a, a GoFundMe page and all of your friends, family, heck, even your enemies can contribute. Everybody can contribute. And we will match up to $2,000. So call us. We're happy to do that for you. We're called Stephen. Myth number two, I need to have good credit. Well, the truth is, as I said, 60% of Americans have had some credit issue. So what is the minimum credit score? There's so much misinformation out there. It really does depend on the program and the product. What is my credit score and why is it different than what I see on a credit report? I constantly have buyers who I run credit for say, well, I was just on Credit Karma. Um, your score, your numbers are very different than my numbers. And then I also have people very fearful saying, well, won't you running my credit hurt my credit score? So let's clear these things up, okay? When you apply for credit cards or personal loans or uh, programs of that type, yes, too many inquiries will absolutely hurt your credit score. When a mortgage company checks your credit score, it has zero impact on your score. And if you go to five different mortgage companies and they all run your credit, as long as it's within a 30 to 40 day window, and we don't know that window for sure because they don't tell us, but as long as you're within a 30 to 40 day window, it's also not a problem. It's all treated as one pool. But I want you to understand that there are three different scoring models. So there is a way they come up with a credit score if you are applying for a credit card or store charge. 
There is another formula for calculating your credit score if you're applying for a car loan or a school loan. There's another formula if you're applying for a mortgage. So if you're getting your score in your bank statement or your credit card statement or on Credit Karma, my score is going to be different. Could be higher, could be lower. Again, I'm not going to spend too much time here, but we can help folks that have had a bankruptcy, a foreclosure. You could be out of bankruptcy or foreclosure of one day, and we can still help you get a mortgage. So maybe one of the reasons you're renting is because you don't think you can afford a mortgage payment. My experience here in South Florida is has really been that it's cheaper to own than it is to rent. You know, the rents have kind of skyrocketed um, in the two and a half, three years that I've been here. So what do you do? So let me explain something to you. I'm, I'm going to say this. Stephanie and I are not accountants, attorneys, or financial planners, and you should check with your own professionals. But um, I see a, a lot of people purchase a home because it could be good for your income tax situation. The interest on your mortgage could be deductible and the property taxes could be deductible to you. Uh, your rent is usually not deductible. So if you currently get a refund, I, I see lots of people, you know, in in. February, March, April, May, June, walking around with like a silly smile on their face. You see that, Stephanie? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Okay. So the reason they're so happy is because they just got a big fat refund check. And I'm going to tell you, I think you should be crying, not smiling. And I'll explain why. Let me ask you a question. Would you give me $5,000 if I promised to give you back $4,500 a year later? No, I mean, it's a stupid question, right? But that's when you get a refund, that's what happens. The government has had your money um, all year. If inflation's running at 5%, which it's even higher now, but if it's running at 5%, every dollar you get back is only worth 95 cents. And you buy a home you may not be happy in or stay in because of the monthly payment. So what I say is change your withholdings so at the end of the year, you don't get a refund. You don't want to owe any money either. So you got to do this with a professional. But instead of getting that 5000 back at the end of the year, why not get 400 more each month in your paycheck to help make your payments more comfortable? Does that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to share with you I'm going to go back to this slide. I'm just going to ask you a question for a second. How many of you would like to have other people cover your mortgage payment in full, okay, and create a side hustle income of like twenty to 25000 extra a year or more, and give you extra tax benefits? So what am I talking? I have not lost my mind, but I'm going to share this with you. You could buy up to a four unit property, FHA, and put only three and a half percent down. If you're a veteran, you could do it with zero down. And as long as you're going to live in one of the units on a conventional loan, you could do it with five percent down. So think about it. And I'll show you an example shortly, but think about it. You have a four-unit building. Let's say your mortgage payment is $2,000 a month. So you have your unit. You're not getting any rental income. And let's say you have um, three other units, and you're renting each of those other three units out for $1,500 a month. What does that mean? It means that you have $4,500 coming in, off of that $4,500, you have to make a $2,000 mortgage payment, right? And you have another $2,500 left. That's $30,000 a year. So, I mean, that's house hacking at its best. The downside is, yes, you're going to be a landlord, okay? But And you will have other people living in the property, but each unit has a separate entrance, 
just like uh, an apartment building might. And Stephanie will make sure it's zoned correctly. And yes, you will have to be responsible for repairs. But I mean, I call this the real estate loophole. And that's exactly what it is. Um, you can visit the real estate loophole.com or you could buy the book on Amazon. I'm not trying to sell you a book, but it's just interesting. The book goes through literally everything you would need to know to kind of pull off this house hack. Different types of lenders. Let's talk about that. Um, I have a lot of clients that, that tell me, um, gee, you know, I bank with uh, Fifth Third Bank. I'm going to go there for my mortgage. Well, here's the reality, folks. Um, if you, uh, an account, and I'm not picking on any one bank. It could be Truist, Fifth Third, Bank of America. If you have a checking account in there with 10, 20 grand or two, 3,000, yes, they'll be very nice to you and they will do everything they can to help you, but you're not getting anything special usually, okay? So the bank actually went out and bought a mortgage company or started a mortgage company and Bank of America, their mortgage company is called Bank of America Mortgage. They're actually a separate entity. So you need to understand kind of who you're working with. There are small banks out there that are portfolio lenders. There are mortgage bankers and a mortgage banker is lending you their own funds. Okay. And then they turn around and most cases service your loan. Uh, a mortgage banker could be independent like CMG. We're probably one of the top three independent mortgage bankers in the country, or it could be a bank owned mortgage company. And then number three is a mortgage broker. Now a mortgage broker has no funds. They only make money when they place your loan with either a portfolio lender or a mortgage banker. So I'll leave it to you to decide what's best, but my preference has always been an independent mortgage banker and that's what we are. Uh, just some success stories and comments. Um, again, if you've had a credit challenge, you may be special in a lot of ways, but you're not special in that way because lots of people have had challenges. Um, and, you know, to hear just very, uh, I, I think it's really important, you know, anybody could say anything about themselves. It's important to hear from other folks what they say about you. So we've talked about myths. We've talked about programs. We've talked about lots of different things. Sometimes I think it's great to learn, and I hope each of you have gotten one little takeaway so far, but sometimes it's even more important to know what not to do. So let's talk about common mistakes to avoid. The first one is looking at homes before you get pre-approved. There is nothing worse than you going on Zillow or Realtor or driving, finding a property you're in love with, and then finding out that you can't go through with it. I mean, that's, there's no reason for that. And by the way, if you do put a contract in on that house and you're not able to get a mortgage, you've now lost, aside from the emotional distress, you've also lost several thousand dollars because you have to pay for an appraisal. You have to pay for a home inspection. You have lots of out-of-pocket costs that you're never, ever going to get back. So step one is stop looking. <laughs> get pre-approved first so Stephanie, as the professional, can share with you homes that meet your criteria in the areas you're looking for. Um, now, what is pre-approved versus pre-qualified? I'll explain it to you this way. Pre-qualified means everything you told me sounds good. Pre-approved means I've run credit. I have looked at your W-2s, pay stubs, bank statements, and run you through an underwriting program. So, very big difference. I'm going to pause here for a second. So each of you can take a screenshot of this.
Okay, so here's another mistake to avoid. Working with an online lender. So here's what I compare this to. Um, I could go on YouTube, watch a video, and extract a tooth from my mouth if it's bothering me. I don't suggest it. I'd much prefer to go to a professional dentist and have do it the right way. It's the same thing when you are looking for a mortgage. A lot of online lenders, um, you know, they're, the information they're giving you may or may not be accurate. They may or may not be uh, familiar with South Florida. And there are lots of nuances in South Florida that online lenders just may not even be familiar with. As an example, in Broward County, it's customary to split transfer tax and dock stamps. In Palm Beach County, it's customary for the seller to pay it all. So lots of little subtleties. Um, again, very important that you have people who are professionals, who are willing to work with you, sit down, answer your questions. And Stephanie and I, as you can see, are those people that uh, are the professionals in real estate and mortgage lending. And again, it's making sure that you are looking in the right areas and that at the end of the day, you are matched up with the right program and will have a comfortable payment. Myth number four, not knowing your score. Again, as I said earlier, what you see on Credit Karma is not the score for a mortgage. And I'm gonna give you a little big, big mistake to avoid here. Something I've been telling my wife for a very long time. Never avoid ugly. Ugly is beautiful, okay? Ugly is um, really the big opportunity in this market. If you can find a property with Stephanie that is in a great neighborhood, maybe it's outdated, maybe it's just a little ugly, might, heck, it might even have red shack or purple carpet in it, right? But we are the number one renovation lender in the United States. And very few people are looking at ugly homes. Everybody wants something you can just walk in and turn the key or new construction. The problem is new construction is really very expensive. The opportunity here is much less competition finding an ugly house. And then we will lend you the money, for example, put in a new kitchen, new flooring. You choose the paint color. You choose the appliances. You can redo the bathrooms. You can redo, build a deck. There's a million different things you can do. The real big opportunity to walk in and, and really even make some money in real estate, very honestly, is buying the ugliest house in the best neighborhood. So just don't avoid it. Now, we started by telling you in the very beginning here about sort of the market and what you would have missed out on. We have a special program. If you are worried about interest rates, don't, don't worry, <laughs> okay? We have a very, very, very unique program. It's called Rate Rebound. And what we do is we will refinance you for free. No lender charges at all with a credit towards your other lender uh, title charges. So any time from six months to five years of rates drop, and you've taken our advice, which is to marry the house and date the mortgage, um, you can refinance so you can't lose. Your home is going up in value and will make your payment even more affordable. So I hope you've learned something. I hope you, I'm gonna leave this up for a second. Again, I, I'm not taking questions because everybody's situation is a little bit different and we wanna make sure we give you the answer for your situation. So there's no cost for getting pre-approved. Um, there's no obligation. There's no cost, there's no blood sample, your analysis, it's really pretty painless. And we can walk you through which products would be best for you, make sure that we're addressing um, ways for you to have the funds for down payment and closing, making sure that it's also in sync with what your budget is. So I hope everybody uh, really 
uh, got something to take away from here, but most importantly, it's a great time to buy a house. Um, and stop paying your landlord's mortgage. Start paying your own mortgage and start creating some generational wealth. So, Stephanie, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Wow. Thank you, Brian. I mean, I hope you guys um, found as much value as I did with that information and feel even more closer to achieving home ownership. I look back at the time that I purchased a home for the first time, and man, I wish I had this information. I, I mean, just thinking back, I felt so lost. I didn't know where to even start, but thankfully, this is why we're here. We're here to avoid that feeling for you. Um, so, like Brian said, with getting pre-approved, um, this is why we're here. So, we're here to, to help you along this way. We're here to give you the information and to set you up for success. Um, so, like Brian mentioned, you saw his information. In case you have any question that should come up, you have his information. So, feel free to shoot him an email. Um, my information is also going to be on the slide. And if you do have any questions, please, please feel free to shoot me an email. I'll be more and more than happy to go over any of your questions, any concerns that you have. And again, I just want you to know that we are here for you. We're here for this very, very important step, which is purchasing a home. And we want you to know that you don't have to do this alone. We're here for every step. So again, thank you. I wanna thank you all for taking the time to join me and Brian today. I look forward to connecting with each of you in the near future. And like I mentioned, should any questions come up, please feel free to email myself or Brian, and we'll be more than happy to help you with anything that you may have. So thank you all. I hope you all have a great, great day.